And this is the point which you start making some extending reference to, which is what I refer to some things that are considered secret, really are not secret to me. Not only secret because I was informed of these things, but because I was an active figure in causing some of these things. In, in 1975, or 76, basically, while I was running a campaign for the presidency, I had delivered into my hands a common copy of a letter written by a member of the Carter candidacy team, the Brzezinski crowd. And what they would announce, what this letter said, is the plan for a threatened nuclear attack on the Soviet Union to be carried out under the Carter administration. Now, some of you who are old enough may remember that I devoted the hot phase, concluding phase of my presidential campaign in 1976 to this issue, and announced that this, inten this was the intention of the people behind the incoming Carter administration, Brzezinski and company, to pull an operation modeled upon what had been done by the British eh, in behind Bertrand Russell in launching the original plan for a pre preventive nuclear attack on the Soviet Union, of a plan which was launched officially in 1976, in September 1976. So what I did in this context, in 1976 in context, is I went to circles and discussed what can we do in a certain direction. Now, when you get into a, a posture of warfare, that is, you, you, you have declared who the enemy is and you are arming to have a war with this enemy, that you have declared to be your enemy. You cannot, by simple diplomacy, get rid of that kind of a problem. You could not have just diplomats going in and talking with each other and suddenly coming away because you've got a whole military establishment, a whole military strategic establishment has been mobilized on either side, in this case major powers, which are organized on the existential intent of sometime sooner or later going to war with each other. In this case it was nuclear war. So therefore you have to find an intermediate approach which takes into account the military factor. In other words, your negotiation of peace, if it's going to be effective, must be a negotiation of an intent to peace among the factors which are the controllers of the military establishment involved. So that's the approach I took. I went to people who are in the U.S. military line of command and into people who I, whose views I shared from my experience during World War II overseas. And we, with our discussions, by 1979, had developed a plan which we, I was preparing to have presented, both to leading circles in our own country and in the Soviet Union. At that time, I knew the Soviet Union was about to disintegrate, not in the short term, but the process was there. And the war posture and the war burden, the military burden in the Soviet system was one of the impediments for the Soviet economy. So therefore, if we could define a military-based policy, which would be a policy of cooperation, or intent to have cooperation, rather than a conflict, we could in that way get out of that mess. That's what he did. Now, at a somewhat later point, at the time that president, uh, a new president, Reagan, had been elected and was not yet president, I carried this, this further into actually where people coming out of what was to be the Reagan administration, but in the com intelligence community, not the administration otherwise, but through the intelligence community. And they agreed with my efforts. I said, I want to go to the Soviets and propose that we do this. And there were all kinds of scientific considerations involved in, in what I proposed. 
So a leading section of this, including the head of the National, Se National Security Intelligence at that time, the head of the CIA at the time, after Nick, uh, Reagan had been elected, agreed. Some of these were people who had shared the same opinions I had back in World War II. They were, I didn't know them then, but when I was in World War II, and they were in World War II, we were actually had converging views about the interests of the United States and how to deal with these things. So this became known as a baby I designed. I was involved for organizing leading forces in the French and other military in France, diplomats in, in, in Italy, you know, in Germany, in Argentina, and so forth. So I organized what became known as the SDI. The Reagan administration put on the name SDI. But I was the center, the intellectual ar architect of what became known the SDI, and the pusher of the policy. And a lot of things that happened to me can be explained in terms of that, exactly that issue. So we went for the program. Significant parts of the Soviet apparatus were engaged in discussions with representatives of the United States and similar circles during this period, including a famous conference which occurred on the tip of Sicily in Eritrea. Now, everything seemed fine. Then again, in 1983, President Reagan went on the horn un unexpectedly by some people, but known to the intelligence community, and known to me. Gotcha. Went on the horn and gave a speech, which is his famous SDI speech. He proposed to the Soviet Union nothing different than I had proposed and had been the policy of the effort which I had been making since 1975. I organized it. Now, why didn't it work? Two factors. The principal factor, the British. The British killed it. But how did they kill it? Why did Andropov, Yuri Andropov, who had British antecedents in terms of influence, why did he summarily, without discussion, publicly repudiate any discussion with President, Franklin, with President Reagan? Because he was controlled by British agents. Now, the core of this, which became nastier and nastier, was associated with a subsequent successor to Andropov, Gorbachev, who, from my standpoint, from my standpoint of objective knowledge, objective judgment, Gorbachev was a traitor to the Soviet Union. And his actions cannot be explained in any other terms. Here's the Soviet Union on the road to destruction. The United States is committed, in terms of the present, in a program which I've designed, which has vast support in France, the military in France, in Germany, and other countries, to go to work and work our way out of a advers nuclear adversarial condition by a science driver program to go into new technologies which will eliminate the danger from such a military technology. And this guy summarily, Underpop, summarily rejects that when large sections of the Soviet apparatus have understood it and agreed with it? In the middle of the, 19, in the, middle of the 1980s, it became clear there were people who technically would be qualified as traitors to the Soviet Union and to Russia, who are today powerful figures inside Russia. They don't represent necessarily the top level in Russia. They represent a very important factor, which is allied to Britain. And most of the offices were trained in Britain. From the middle of the 1980s on, the leading forces in Russia today were trained and directed by British intelligence circles, largely inside London itself. Those people are, in a sense, controlling key positions in Russia today and are the key impediment 
to saving Russia from the destruction which threatens to hit Russia today when the Brazil crisis explodes, as it will. In other words, the, gen the way this crisis is going now, the general financial crisis in the world today, is on the way to our breakdown crisis, not a depression, a breakdown crisis. There never will be a recovery of the economy in the world, anywhere, as long as this danger exists. If we don't eliminate Wall Street today, or what is the equivalent of Wall Street today, the United States is not going to exist, and we're going to have a crisis from which no nation will exist as a nation, will be in decay. So these characters, who are elite, like Chubais, not only Gorbachev, but Chubais and others, who are part of the British school of treason, from a Russian patriotic standpoint, or Soviet patriotic standpoint, the British school of treason, are behind the major problem we have today. And it's the alliance of that with the British Empire, through this group, you know, this you got these creatures, creature here, the brick? You got the, uh, okay. This is the group. Remember, the United States economy system was crashed in August of 1971. In August of 1971, the British Empire, operating through a group headed by Jacob Rothschild and others, created what is, what is called the, this group today. They are the controlling force today. They are actually rotten, and they are about to crash. This is the center of the bubble which is about to pop. And when this bubble pops, unless we have an alternative policy in place, the horror world's going down, going down with it, like the new dark age. That's where the problem lies. And the problem also lies, Russia, China, and India have a vital common interest, in fact, with the United States, with nations in continental Europe, and others, in revising a new system of cooperation to get the world economy out of this crisis. Largely a nuclear power driven, transportation driven, infrastructure program, which can be done. It can be financed, and it can work, and it can end this depression. This is the impediment. And the, the, the influence of this element, like a pack of traitors, inside the Russian system, is the secret to the problem. That's the, that is the technical point. That's the point of attack. That's what you must destroy. That's the enemy. Don't pick on enemy, everybody you don't like. Pick on an enemy to destroy. Pick on the right enemy and don't attack anybody else. Destroy that enemy. That's the enemy. And it's going to pop anyway. But if that enemy is in charge politically, it will do what was done to the United States hmm, under the late <laughs> Bush presidency in 2007, at a point where we could have organized a recovery from the crisis that broke out, the so-called mortgage crisis, which broke out in the, in the summer of 2007, I had a program which would have stopped it and started a reorganization process. They went in the opposite direction to save Wall Street at the expense of the people, expense of the nation. This is the crowd behind it. This crowd is determined to destroy the United States and to destroy civilization generally. It's a very nasty plan. But the point is, Let's don't worry about all the details of the plan. Let's look at the point. How do we defeat this monster? How do we get this, rid of this monster? How does Russia get rid of this monster? The succubus, which is sucking the blood out of it. What is crazy swindle? Russia has, you, you have to go through the details as I went through them in Russia back in the 90s and, early, and later. Russia was systemically destroyed. The design for the destruction of Russia, which occurred after 1989, was already built up in Britain under British supervision by Russians who worked on, under British direction in designing the problem, people like Chubais, Gorbachev, and so forth, who effectively were traitors to the Soviet Union and implicitly traitors to their own country today, who destroyed the Russian economy 
after the collapse of the Soviet Union and did it systemically for political reasons. The same group that is out to destroy us. Therefore, we and the Russian people have a common adversary. And we have nations such as China and India who agree with what we should agree with on a nuclear power reorganization of the planet. For going into space, continuing accelerating the space program as a part of the development of humanity, of science and technology, the exploration of nearby space to take, to take care of the needs of future humanity. And this is the enemy. The point in this thing is to understand this. This is the way history works. Not the way the New York Times or the crazy you know, Washington Post says. Not this garbage. This is the way it really works. And has always worked in modern history since the Peloponnesian War in European history. And this is what we must destroy. So British agents inside the Russian system are the same people who, bet, who, who looted and bankrupted Russia under British direction. And if you want to find the offices of the people who run the Russian economy in terms of this financial operator, they all are located outside Russia in British territory. The British Empire, in hopes by controlling Brazil, controls the world. And it's coming down. And that's the reality we have to understand.